the Anfield rap, Neil Atkinson, Rob Gutman, Gareth Roberts, Jay McKenna. After West Ham United nil, Liverpool 4, sometimes I sent the invites out for these things. And this one was a bit late and I always think people will be looking at it going, I'm not sure about this, you know, because it could be a bit of a sticky one and it could be an awkward Monday afternoon. Um, Jay, um, it's a great result, isn't it, this one at the weekend? It's a great result, it's a great performance. There's only positives to talk about. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and me and Robbo um, were chatting about this on Saturday afternoon and we're both, should we say, uh, on the pessimist, pessimistic side of it. I was very much thinking... You know, Liverpool, the mindset had been don't lose, don't lose, don't lose. And we were going to turn up and draw one all or draw nil nil with West Ham. But it was fantastic. Um, lots of positives. The win, the way the fans feel about that now, the way the club, I suppose, feels. But more importantly, you know, lots of promise, I suppose, for, for next season. The player performances gives us more questions, I suppose, than it does answers about incomings and outgoings, what formations might work for Klopp moving forward. It was... Uh... It was just a great afternoon, Robbo, you know what I mean? Every single, the manager referred to it afterwards as being perfect. It seemed perfect to me. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say it was perfect as well because what I didn't want, um, and what I'm, you know, Jay referenced our convo there, and I, I, I was worried that, you know, A, that we don't get the result we needed. Well, we did that. But B, as well, it had to be a big performance as well, really. And I think the fact that it was and that we won so convincingly and so well and played so well now means that only the completely and utterly miserable people who support Liverpool can can be pessimistic about going into Sunday. And what I was worried was that if, if it was another one of those results where, you know, it's one moment of magic and then we dog it out, then then you, you're getting a, a fairly negative crowd on Sunday. Now I think everyone should be buzzing. There should be a spring in everyone's step. Liverpool played some fantastic football. Coutinho was amazing. Sturridge was amazing. In general, they, they looked confident. They looked together. And I can't see anything other now than Liverpool blowing butter away when we when we play them at Anfield. And I hope everyone brings their A game to the ground as well and we just have a, a fantastic afternoon. And also as well, um, I don't know if it's it's due to come up elsewhere on the show, but, but the score on four has, has took us right up to City's goal difference now. And so the, yeah. there's also the outside chance of third now. And so, you know, again, it should be a carnival atmosphere come Sunday. And if it isn't, well, there's something seriously wrong. I was egging this on at four. I, I, I was on, more. I was on to the goal difference thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing the maths and I thought, you know what? Basically, the way it plays out is I think we need City have to not win their two two last <coughs> excuse me their two last games. But in the game they do win or must win in this scenario, we have to win by a goal more. So it's 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 nicely tight. Um, I want to be the guy you've just described who's not going to be anxious <laughs> by next week. But it'd be mad to be worried about Borough at home. The thing that nags at me though. Is, is getting hubristic in football. And it's not just being worried about mockers. It's a, and I'm, you could see Klopp straight away was, was nervous about it, is that you don't take anything for granted in football because it can make you play that bit shitter and it can make an easy home game be something else. But notwithstanding that, Gareth's right that we do have to turn up as though we're a triumphant army ready to, ready to see something off. Having said that, I'd love it if Sunderland did something crazy and got a point against well, Arsenal. I wrote something on the site yesterday just because, you know, it, it got me buzzing. It got me buzzing for the, for the last game. And I put, like, you know, I've been going now 27 years to the game and there's been so many last games of the season that have gone to Anfield that have just meant absolutely nothing. And I'm not, I'm not trying to put you know, top four on a plinth and say it's better than a trophy because I don't think it is. But but at the same time, though, it means something for Liverpool to get back in the Champions League. It's absolutely vital. And to be just going into the last game of the season, you know, a nice day in May and all that with something to play for, there's a lot to be said for that because you've I've essentially watched, and we've all watched, you know, glorified friendlies on the last day yeah. where you're just waiting for the, the players to come round and the kids with the kids and clap them off. And, you, you know, you just all you're thinking about is going for a pint, really. And, and thinking about what's you know next season, whereas this is like this is something real, you know. And butter, butter, okay, are down. I won't have a lot to play for. I, I, I just, I, I just hope Liverpool absolutely come flying out the traps. I always say this, but I really hope they do on Sunday and just, just score a halfful and just make it that exciting. And, and I hope, I hope City have sort of cocked up along the way and and, and third goes to the wire because that'd be brilliant. Do you feel like we had proper players again? And, and I'm looking forward to that next Sunday. You know, look, it's quietly lalana has got fit. I know we lost Firmino, but getting Sturridge back is like we've signed another good player. And you looked at our team, their, their injury decimated team, and you looked at our team before kickoff, and you thought, you know what, we really should beat when, these. When um, when Gareth talks there about starting fast next week, Jay, to go back to this week's game a little bit, the the the, the 
the blueprint is what you saw after half time, where they've been obviously yeah, yeah. been absolutely. Yeah, I'm not going to say they've had a rocket. They might have given themselves a rocket. They might have looked at each other and gone, "Lads, that was too close. The other end there. Let's put this to bed now. We just got to get out mm. there and do this." You know, I'm not going to say for a second it was some sort of brilliant, inspirational half time team talk by the manager. It could have been by the players. It could have been the players just looking at each other. But the point is, the foot on the throat after half time is a real example of just not leaving anything to chance. I reckon it was your big ten tweet, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it and you got it. Um, no, it was. Liverpool come out and said, you know what, we want to see this game off. We want to, you know. And also, I don't even think it was thought to see the game off. We're just playing really well. Carry on. Let's not contain this. And actually, I, I even said this to myself later on in the game. 70, 80 minutes and you're thinking, get the kids on now. Give, Ar give Arnold a run out here. Get Sturridge off. Give Woodburn a go. Give Guru just, you know, 15 minutes. See, see what he's about. And then I thought, nah, Klopp's probably just thinking to himself, yeah, nah, this is working. Yeah. I don't need to change nothing. These are all fine. They're all fit. They're all see enjoying we, the game. They're all enjoying it. See if we can get another couple of goals. Did you see him go to storage? It looked to me like he was going, hey, do you want to stay on it? Because he, for exactly that point you made. It looks like storage went to yeah, your job. Chat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah, dead yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah they had a chat. They were dead jovial. The commentator said about this, didn't they? I think Carragher had said he's, yeah. he's told him he's staying now this next year. Because they were just laughing and joking. It was like, a, you know, it was, it was going really well for Liverpool. And you can see why he didn't change it. There was yeah. no need to, so close to the end of the season. The players weren't going to, you know, at risk of picking an injury up. If one had to come, it would have been a complete accident sort of fluke. So, you know, he's thinking to himself, no, this is the team. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's thinking, you know what, let them play most of the game because this is my team next Sunday and they're going to do the same business again. One one thing I think has been overplayed in, in post-match is the idea that, um, you know, West Ham were just on the beach and all this sort of thing. And I think that's dead typical of, of of almost you know the negativity that exists within our fan base because we've just won four 0 with a really convincing performance. Then straight away there's a caveat, and it's like can we not just say for once Liverpool were great? And you know Wenger's come out and had a moan about teams on the beach, and quite clearly everyone's joined the dots. And you know it looks like he means West Ham, but look at the way that game starts. They they started mm. well. Yeah. And and they they could have scored there. You know, I can't remember the lad's name now, the uh, the, the, the fullback from Byron. Leeds. Yeah, he has a great chance to score there. And you know, it, it's not like they were just sitting off and not getting not getting involved. They started fast. They I think they believed when they when they kicked off that they could get something out of the game. Very much so. And and, and slowly, you know, Liverpool turned the screw and put on and got, got their hand around the neck and took control of the game as it, as time went on and proved how much superior they were to them. But I don't think West Ham started with flip flops on. I think I think it's I think it's important, this Gareth, to say that you know, bar the first 10, 15 minutes and the one mad chance before half time, Liverpool are in charge, and I think that you can you can sometimes go aside. Looks like they're on the beach, but if the if that game happens in February, no one's saying on the beach to say Liverpool just took control of the game. And I think yeah. that happens all the way through the season. I think you play a side in the in the bottom half. And if you just exert enough superiority over them, Rob, at any stage of the yeah. season, they acquiesce to the inevitable. They go, well, all right, these lads are too good for us. And maybe they're not giving 100% all game, but that's what you're trying to make them do. We haven't been doing enough of this, I don't think, in the second half yeah. of the season. Basically, you're, move, you're making them devoid of hope and going, right, well, there's no way for you back in this game because we're just better than you. And you can do that at any stage of the season. We were doing that to sides back in October. Yeah. You're putting them in their place, absolutely. Uh, is what you say. I mean, let's, the moment West Ham were in when they go into this game is they've beaten Tottenham. The talk beforehand you could hear was that that was like their best performance of the season. There was a, this is their last game in front of their fans. It's been a tricky season, a chance to go out on the back of two or three wins. That would have been Billich's team talk. They, it wasn't, come on, lads, let's just see this out. It, it, yeah, as you, their response to going behind is, was, a, was not of a team that was on the beach. They're just a not very good team, and they had some injuries. But we've we all play not very good teams in this league week in week out, and don't always beat them. When you beat them decisively, it's only to be praised and celebrated. Yeah, they had, they had eight out, didn't they? I think. But I mean, that's not that, that's their eight problem. Shit lads yeah, but, eight but, shit but, lads. but people looking for a reason to be negative about it after, but are doing just that. They are trying to seek out a reason because there were lots of us who were pessimistic or were slightly concerned and thought this is the game Liverpool slip up in. This is the game where we might not, <laughs> you know, turn up and and struggle to break them down. This is the game where, you know, it's in Liverpool's hands and we'll st still conspire to cock it all up. And we didn't do that. That wasn't because West Ham, you know, weren't bothered. Their chances aside, the professional footballers, even if they're just going through yeah. emotions, they're still dangerous. Yeah. They're still going to get a chance and maybe take it. Liverpool set up in a way that was ruthless and efficient and professional. Liverpool knew they had to go and do a job. And, done it. and I'll expect the same on Sunday, but... You know, we shouldn't be too negative. We should be thankful for it. We should think, you know what, that, that's really good. Liverpool maybe have got something out of the system here. Yeah, 
it's going to help us this season for top four, but more importantly, it's going to help us for next season. The players will be able to look at that performance and say, you know what, it worked. Klopp will be able to look at that and say to the players, remember the time we played that formation against West Ham? We're going to do that again. They will remember. They will have learned from this as well. So it, it's a really good thing that we should, you know, we should be welcoming this. If, the... if anything, for the very basic, that it now puts it top four firmly in our hands and maybe even top three. It... The system change is interesting, Rob, about whether the extent to which he feels as though it's forced on him or the extent to which it's something that he just wants to do. Or the Coutinho sort of, yeah, move. Well, the Coutinho, Coutinho deeper in the 4-2 diamonds, which he plays, mm. you know, the, both both aspects of it, really. Does he feel as... Has he been wondering about this for a while? I think sometimes you can almost overstate the science of bits of football management. He might well have been, you know, this is something he's been on and on about for, 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 for weeks or months or thinking, I wish I could get storage properly fixed. I want to do this or any of the above. Um, but it feels like a massive move to do it in this game. And you see the extent to which all aspects of it, Coutinho deeper, Sturridge uh, and Origi up front together, all aspects, are, all as- aspects, he plays for Celta Vigo, all as- uh, aspects of it play dividends, uh, pay dividends for Liverpool. They did. And I think I think he would have <coughs> racked his brain, tossed and turned the night before over Lucas Laver's role. Lucas has played well. He was an injury doubt, but he's fit enough to be on the bench. He must have been tempted to have just straightforwardly pushed Lallana into a front three with Coutinho and one of those strikers and gone Wijnaldum, Chan, anchored by Lucas and gone, gone for that. That that would have been the, the obvious solution. But I think he's thought, we've got to win this game. We've got to win this. We've got to do We've got to break some... There's not been a mould because we've quietly won quite a few games in this run-in. But, <clears throat> but at times, teams have been able to frustrate us. And it was, it, you know, it was, it was lovely to see it tried. I think everyone was in the ground. There was a little buzz in the away end that that was the team he'd gone with. It was a lovely sh- team sheet, wasn't it? it yeah, was, we I mean, it's a sure. team sheet that made you just go, you know what, if we don't win today. I mean, I remember when we were sitting around pre-match, what was being said was, well, if we don't win today, we just don't win today. We're going for this. And that's that gets you that gets you going as an away support. And yeah, seeing Sturridge in the team is, is as someone said on a podcast a while back, he always feels like good news. And uh, whatever form he's been in, and he's and he's shown he's shown hints in coming back recently that he's got something to offer. And Ari, it's strange because Origi was actually wretched. I thought first half, maybe that's too harsh. I don't know, but I thought second half he was, he was struggling. I thought he was. I thought he was very very good. And you, you saw how it worked at its best first half. But uh, yeah, but it, it was a strange game for me. I, I know I know you said at the beginning of it, Neil that it it felt sort of perfect. It didn't feel that. I mean, I was in the ground. But, you know, you're seeing it from a bloody long way away at times, but it didn't feel perfect for a lot for uh, until that goal went in. It felt like it could be a really tough afternoon. I think there's a little. There's, it's, it's an interesting one because I've, I've watched it back, and there's there's an interesting sort of once you know the results, what you what you think in between fifteen f- zero to fifteen zero to fifteen they could they they, they could take the lead and mm. and the game's just settling into a pattern. Fifteen to thirty is just Liverpool beginning to get on top. And then they score, and then thirty to forty-five bar the the corner is is. It looks it, like all part of the. Plan. It looks it look, it just looks like Liverpool are much the better side. It looks like they're in charge. I can well imagine that you know even more so being in the ground rather than not watching it. And you know, it is it feels like oh god, this could still go either way all the way through that period. But watching it back and watching that sort of that the, the way the phases of play go, you just sort of if you you know it's it's, it's like reading a book. Now in the end, you're thinking you can see how these this inexorable conclusion finally happens here. If you know what I mean. It was a. Nerd- it was. I would say it was a nervy away end. Well, of course, the there's, there's huge, huge, was, huge, huge things riding on it. I didn't. Yeah, but there wasn't. I mean, a lot of. Well, go on, talk about this, but the, the structure of the ground doesn't help. But it was one of the quietest sort of starts to the game. You know, normally our away end is up for it at the beginning at least, and if they fade, it's because we've had a bad first 10, 15 minutes. It didn't feel like that. But once the goal went in, it was. As, it felt as good as an away end as I've been, and it was. Everything was. Let, everyone was ready to to sort of play their part. But it just it just it just goes. That's to a show. tension thing, isn't it? Yes, Probably. it is. Yeah. I, I suspect that's tension. I, I, you know, the the fans know this is so important. It's a big day out, and if we lose this, it's out of our hands. It's yeah. not even that. It's it's a big game. I think it's 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 our last chance to keep it in our hands as such. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I think that's tension, and that's why you can see that even in the first goal is a big let off from the fans. Yeah. Big sense of and even the other goals that come, you know, it's a celebratory thing, but it's still a let off. We have two or three up now. This is it. It's done. Brilliant. Fantastic. Relief is a great way to Relief, celebrate, you know, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's like it's a big weight off your shoulder. You <laughs> celebrate and you enjoy it and it's and it's good. Coming back to the formation thing, Neil, I I can see what you're saying about it being forced on him, but I don't think it's forced on him just because of the injuries. I think the Firmino being out gives him an opportunity to try it. But I think it's forced on him to actually try and get the best out of some of those players. 
because we've got so many good players, but they all, lots of them play in similar positions or lots of them can play in a front three, but aren't as good in midfield. And and I think he's at, he's had to try and do something different. The Coutinho thing in midfield shouldn't be not new to anybody. You know, he done oh, it. Oh no, and, no. He, he, he done it, and it's very similar, I suppose, because he set Sturridge up for the same thing. Coutinho played in midfield when we beat Everton four four nil at Anfield under Rodgers, mm. and Coutinho plays a ball where he pinch. He does everything that is on the agenda. He wins the ball back, and he plays a pass into Sturridge straight away, and Sturridge goes off and scores. And he'd done the same thing. Was it, in fact, was it? He he'd done it at the derby, but he also done it. I think against Arsenal. Doesn't well. the Arsenal five one? Yeah. The Arsenal five one. So him in midfield there really works for Liverpool. You know it. He gets the ball. He likes to drop foot. It gives him a bit of space, I think, sometimes to run up players. Because when agree. it's in the final three mm-hmm. and he's out wide, he's got a right back he's got to go past. And then he's got a midfielder who's coming back in. And then he's got a centre half before he's even thinking about getting a shot off. Whereas he drops deep, picks that ball up, he's built up a bit of head of steam. And then they're thinking, hang on, we're all flat footed, back in position. Which way is he going to go? He's got loads of options. Then he can pass it off to someone, one, twos. And it really works well. And Are you surprised you haven't seen more of a Jay? Um, no, because I think he's been in that position where we have had injuries earlier in the season and he's had a three and four. Well, Coutinho's better than the three because we've got more midfield choices at the time. So I'll have, you know, when Henderson's fit, you know, he's thinking, well, hang on, I've got Henderson, Juan Alden, Chan, Lucas, mm-hmm. Lalana. You know, he doesn't he doesn't automatically fit into that midfield. I think it maybe shows us something that Klopp might do next year a bit more of, that I think even with a front three, even when we play an out and out three, I don't think we'll see Coutinho win it all of the time. I think I sorry, I just quit point. I think I don't get what Gareth is saying. Like, I've I haven't spoken for ages, Gareth. I, I can see you last spoke up here, and so, Gareth Gareth's like on uh, he's on eight minutes, Rob. So come on, give him a I'll chance. I'll be really quick. Here. <laughs> it was just it was just about uh, Jay's point there. I think it gives Coutinho more space, but I think it also creates more space ahead of him because I think it draws people towards him. They can't you can't sit deep if 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 the, if the star yeah. man with the quality at his feet is dropped off deeper. What do you do? Leave him to pick passes all day, or do you have to draw? You have to. Pr- get up the pitch and therefore leave spacing behind. That's my point. Uh, I, I was just going to say that, you know, back to what you said earlier about, you know, the sort of pattern of play. I think it, think it was a little bit of a nervy start and maybe they hadn't quite worked out what they were all doing. You know, Milner gets caught covering the fella in the middle and, and leaves that fullback to have that effort that I mentioned earlier. But I think it, I think then it did start to, to very quickly settle down and, and we did start to sort of turn the screw on West Ham. And I think it's interesting how, how deep Coutinho was going. He was almost sort of like re- reminds me of when uh, Al- Alonso almost come and would get the ball off the centre ass feet almost and just go, "I'm having this because I'm the playmaker here and I'm the one who can do." It. And and everyone seemed happy to do that. You know, you see seeing Chand using the ball less, Lovren using the ball. Where in, in other games they've looked for the pass out, mm. and it seemed like they were almost saying, "Well, we know Coutinho is great in this position. We're happy for him to have the ball. Give him the ball, and he'll make things happen." And that's what was happening. He was, you know, even before the goal. You know, there was a few little moments. He was finding Lalana in space. He was finding Coutinho. Uh, sorry, he was finding Sturridge in space. And I think the movement was just so much better as well. You know, we can talk about sort of passes and positions and all that sort of thing. But the movement all over the p- pitch was much better than the other week. When we, you know, we were all saying about how static Liverpool were the other week and how, how Chan and Lucas were on each other's toes almost. This time, like Liverpool looked at, you know, a lot more fluid, a lot more movement. And, you know, the movements allied to the passion of Coutinho well, from deep is what, what wins is the game. Just on that, just to come back to you on that, Gareth, there is the... One of the things that I take from it is that, firstly, what it does is, if you're saying Coutinho was... You know, if Coutinho... I've seen is when we've struggled at times this season, in any game, you know, even games that we've gone on and won, one of the things that starts <coughs> happening is Coutinho starts to come deeper and deeper because he wants to take responsibility for what's happening. And it's interesting that, I, you know, it's like we went, right, well, we'll just give him the responsibility from the mm. outset then. Just get, let him have that responsibility from the outset. But the other thing I noticed is when Coutinho was, when, again, when we're looking for something in a game and Coutinho plays higher, you look at the other players and they pick the ball up and the first thing they do is they look and they go, where's Coutinho? Yeah. Whereas everyone was looking and going, where's Sturridge? Especially Coutinho. So now Coutinho's got it and he's looking up and now he's looking up to a lad who, you know, Coutinho gets two in the game, but he's looking up to a lad who's a, Pure centre forward. That's what yeah. he is. That's what, and it just gives you that completely different dynamic. It gives you that more sort of destructive. We're gonna force it. We're gonna make it happen. Boys, dynamic and the yeah. amount of time the ball's going vertical because they're, they're all going. But especially Coutinho, and it just felt really, really sort of 2014, 15. Uh, head up. Where is he? I'll find him. He's yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. my best player. He's the one I'm going to. And and Sturridge just looked bang on it, didn't he? From the start. I mean, he had a couple of efforts that 
you know, I seen on the highlights and stuff that they were quite critical of him taking those shots. And I'm not. I'm fine no, with him taking yeah. those shots because you're thinking he's just getting his, the measure of of the game and here. He's, he's having himself. a go. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in general, I thought Liverpool shot a lot more yesterday than they have been doing. Twenty six of them. Yeah. Seems, seems almost like you know the. They've tried to sort of walk it in at times in recent weeks, and yesterday they were backing themselves. All of a sudden, the Regis letting off shots from from all angles and second half, and that's and that was great to see backing themselves, as you say. But what the, there was a moment I really liked. We, I think this was before we scored when um, when Milner tries to find Sturridge, and, and Sturridge is just caught offside. But what I loved was the fact that Sturridge turned round and bollocked Milner for not releasing it slightly earlier because he'd made the right run and he'd found that little pocket of space and he it was as though he was saying, look, you find me and I'm going to put it away here, boys. And it was like, you just thought, everything about him in those early exchanges, you just thought, hello, Sturridge is on it here. He's going to be great here. And, and, he, and he was fantastic uh, throughout the, well, 87 or something he was on. <laughs> I was just about to come in on that one. That, that one really stood out for me because it showed Sturridge wanted this as well. Yeah. It showed the sharpness from him. But I think the other thing, and it... it if you're going to play storage, maybe this does fit in having someone like Coutinho behind him. He needs a certain kind of service. Carragher was saying this during the commentary. Sturridge is, Sturridge isn't fast. He's just sharp and he's got a brain and yeah. he knows what he probably knows what defenders are going to do nine times out of ten. Hence why he's screaming at Milner for that. He's like, if you literally give me that half a second earlier, I've got a quarter of a yard on this player and I know I can bang and get a shot off and I know I've got a powerful shot and I'll get I'll make something happen here. I'll make the defender draw, I'll commit a foul, I'll draw a foul, I'll get a shot of, I'll do something. But I need you to be on my way, then. Coutinho Central does that for him. He's got someone who can give him service. It's like when Gerard, when Gerard was playing wide right, he could do it because he was, he was, he was exceptional. Gerard and Torres was a different kind of striker. But when Alonso was behind Torres or Gerard was behind Torres, he knew I'll play this ball fairly central and I'll get that in one on one with a defender. Sturridge doesn't need to be trying to take players on. So when Coutinho's wide or Lallana's wide and they're getting the ball because they're our better players, they're our creative ones, we get it wide to them. They've got to take two or three on. But by the time they get the ball into Sturridge, there's probably two or three players he's got to get past to get a shot off or make something happen. Mm. Whereas yesterday we were really good at isolating one centre off with Sturridge. So that Milner one's a great example of it. Playing that ball into him very quickly He's one. He's got one defender. He's got to deal with, and that's really good for him because he isn't gonna get the ball and take him on and come back to a byline and take him on again. He just hasn't got that in his legs. He's not that kind of player. But you can just say to him, like, you just stay in and around the box and you do your business. The, the other thing, though, when you say like you just got, you've got a pure centre forward on the pitch, you could just see that as well. I mean, there's another one, uh, uh, Milner's sort of cross shot that he had with his wrong foot, and he chases it in, doesn't he? And he's he's so close to connecting with that, and it was like. That's what a sense of that's a proper sense of forward. That's what a sense of forward does, and I I think he, when we, he makes that run before Milner's even controlled yeah. it, and I think I actually think it's it looked crap from Milner at the time. I think Milner's interesting. I'm going to talk to him a bit about Sean Rogers on the review show because I think there's a lot of what Milner does that just looks crap, and it might actually be quite good at times. But he's a sort of footballer who just looks like it's all hard work, yeah. and I think that's nearly a really good ball. I think that that's like that's centimeters away from being a great ball yeah. because he look Milner sees him go and he goes, I'm just going to find. And again, it's the sense of forward thing that you're about to say, Gareth. He goes, I'm just going to find me centre forward here, back yeah. post. He can. Or Sturridge, or Sturridge has even probably thought to himself, Milner's going to shoot here. So if he, he drags it wide, or the keeper only gets a bobble on it, keeper gets an answer it, I've got to tap on it. Yeah. He it's knows he's got a chance. Yeah. But no one else does that for us. No. No one else does that for us. No, there's we, we score very few goals like that. And we don't I do think for me, you know, get some poacher ones, but but I would say uh, Origi hasn't been doing that. There's been so many moments where, you know, there's been a cross into the box or there's been something where you think he should be anticipating that and he stood still. And and, and, and it feels to me like that sort of part of the craft that, that Origi still needs to, to learn. And that's the difference between playing Origi and Sturridge up front. Sturridge is an absolute master at playing centre forward. And whether, you, you know... I mean, I can't believe, no, I was supposed to say whether you rate him or not. I can't believe there's people out there who don't rate him yeah. because he's a great player. The, the only issue is his fitness. That's the only issue that's about yeah. Daniel Sturridge. The thing, he, the thing he does for the fourth for me is 
is what I've always loved about Sturridge more than more than the finishes. The fact he's got that same explosive thing that Suarez and, and Torres had. Is he square up his man in the channel, Cresswell. the edge of the box? Yeah, he stands Cresswell. him up. He decides where he's going to have him, and then it's not about pace. It's about it's about explosiveness and quickness yeah. of mind and feet. And he's put him on his ass, and he's turned the yeah. other way. He's, he's, he, he's behind the whole defense, and then he's got a pick of players, and eventually it goes in off Origi. But that for me, you see. That, that shows, I mean, there's a bit in the moment that we talk about Sturridge's pace as being the thing that's gone. And there is a, a bit in the first half, I'll get admittedly on the other end of the ground, where it looks like he's been put through, but he doesn't quite turns have the legs back. to get, yeah, 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 he turns back. And that was the moment when everyone sighed a little bit. And But to see him do what he does for the fourth, makes me think, ah, no, it, it was about that, not that first thing. That's what his pace was always about. Yeah. It, well, no, I think it's important that, he, that he, there's a lot of the time when he's looked, you know, if you... you when he looked like even when he was when he was genuinely quicker in say 13 14 but even goals where it looks like he's running away from people it's actually his movement that makes it look like that as much as it is his actual yeah. raw pace uh, and i think uh, there's no doubt he's lost some pace but i don't think it's loads and i think as jay says as jamie carragher was saying you know sharpness is still there and that's what you're seeing around the 18 yard box in that example mm-hmm. is that he's sharp enough to be able to stand creswell up decide what he's going to do and just completely take him out the game. Well, look that's... at the goal itself. That's an example, Neil, isn't it? Mm. Of, of If you don't know better, you go, that's a quick forwards goal. Yeah? But actually, it's just a, a forward who's timed his run brilliantly. Yeah. To give it, he's, he's 20 yards clear of the nearest challenge. You'd have to, you know, you normally credit that to pace, but it's not about pace. It's it's, it's about movement. It's cleverness, isn't I've it? Just being still, on the shoulder. Yeah, last, you're right. In the 13 14 season, it's true. And even before in his first half year with Liverpool, where Coutinho and him had that amazing partnership. Uh, where he's, Coutinho feels like he's putting him through every other every other game. It's not pace, it's just movement. But the other thing he does, that, which is where Arigi probably gets a bit unfair criticism on this because he's just not that kind of player. But when Sturridge came on um, in the game before as well, he it's better with the players we've got. He's better with the ball into his feet. There's more likelihood that he's going to get it into feet and play it off to someone. There's more likelihood that he's going to poke a little pass through to someone or get a little flick on it mm. that you know leads that you know lays it off to Coutinho or Lallana or someone running onto it. It'd be fascinating to see him with Firmino, to be fair, mm. to see whether they can just develop a partnership. We saw a bit of that last season. Firmino, yeah, Firmino, Firmino the end, but does Bournemouth away, for instance. Yeah, Firmino does the running that he can't do. Rigi's done the same thing there for him. He does the running, he pulls players off and does what he's really good at. Mm. But Sturridge can then just do the bit in and around the box, into feet. You know, the, you play the ball there, and, you know, the ball goes past the man. You're, if Origi's running onto a pass there and it's gone wide into the channel, I'm thinking Origi's going to try and get a touch, maybe try and get to the byline and pull it back. Or mm. he's going to take take it slow and he's going to look for the full back and roll it back to him. Sturridge lets it run past him, lets the man, squares up to the man and thinks, right, what can I do here? What's on for me? Can I get past him? I'm too far away from goal. Little pass back to somebody makes a dart and run for to, to get a, a one two. It's just a different kind of play, and with the players we've got, like Coutinho, like Lallana, that, I think that just suits us better. So, mm. you know, it comes back to that point about the formation yesterday. Coutinho being where he was, you know, it was forced on him. But it, this is the players we've got, and this is what we also needed. We'd looked a bit flat. We needed someone to try something different, or to maybe give us a different option up front without Firmino. And Sturridge managed to do that yesterday. Sturridge managed to show what he's that, that he's still got it. It's just whether he can do it. I think also when you talk about so, so was it was it planned or was it so almost forced upon him? I think it was forced upon him by because Klopp said afterwards that it was basically the best week's training Sturridge has ever put in. You know where he's consistently played well across every training session, and he's gone okay. I've got to give you the go now because because you know Jay referenced our, our little combo we had on. Saturday, and, my, and my, one of my concerns was I knew we were going to be pinning our hopes on Sturridge, and I was worried about it, whether he had a ninety in his legs or not. You know, and and he's proved, he's proved, gladly proved me wrong because I was just worried that you know because of the pace issue and because yeah. you've seen him struggle at times. I just thought if he's playing a whole game all of a sudden, first start since what January, um, yeah. you know, that was my concern, but. My, no, my concern was one of the things that was in my head, even at one 0 and why I was pleased to see us come out the blocks at, at, at second half. But it transpired it was that wasn't the point or the purpose. But one of the things in my head was we might need to win this by sixty, sixty five because we're going to lose Daniel, mm. and just not the case. That when he does cross, well, it's you know it's it's deep into the game. It's deep, deep, deep into the game, and. I mean, it throws open. I want to come back into Coutinho in a minute in terms of the fact that it's worth talking about the fact that he scores two goals and it's a terrific performance all round. It's actually a midfield dynamo performance, which is interesting because it's something that you don't see that much and yet he looks like a footballer capable of it, Rob. Mm. But the storage thing does, you know, Arigi helps him, uh, but also makes far more sense alongside him. 
it does just make you want to say the sentence about, well, what about next season? And that might be, you know, it might be premature in a few senses. It might also be simply too late. It might be that Daniel himself decided he's going to have to move to get his games. But what of next season? What do you want to see happen? It's it's interesting how this has thrown something that looked uh, a done a done deal, i.e., that he would leave uh, into a, into a ray in a good way. I'm a massive storage fan, um, but I've been heartbroken, quite frankly, by his his demise of the demise of his fitness and of being able to see the Daniel Sturridge you've all, all enjoyed watching. So, but I had given up hope. But I suppose, you know, I suppose if I. What would I, I would wish for? I'd wish for him to stay. I'd wish for us to find a, ro- a role for him, even if it, even if we say he's, he's, he's fifth choice striker somewhere along the line, uh, a fifth choice striker that can force his way into being first choice striker just by dint of being fit. I wouldn't like us to hold off buying the two attacking players I think we need because we think Daniel might have a, rena- a renaissance in him. I think we need three, but go on. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're probably right. I think we ha- he, he, we are at a stage where we have to look at him as a luxury player. I think it makes a lot of sense. To keep him because I, do, I think with the, with his fitness record and his and his wage uh, packet, I don't think he's an easy sell for big money. People who think he, we're going to get north of 20, 30 million for Daniel Sturridge on those wages are dreaming because there'd be a big compo payoff. I don't think it's going to happen. However well his last couple of games in the, of the season might go, um, so I think it makes more sense to keep him, let him see the contract out, and then and then review it then and go, yeah, well, do you know what? He could be a Zlatan here. Let's let's hope he has, he, he's got over his fitness issue. Let's see him have an Indian summer of a career. He's still young, isn't he? What, 27, 28, I think? Seven, yeah. So uh, there is a possibility we have a fantastic football on our hands again. I, I just don't see it happening, sadly. Um, I, I'm a big fan of him, like I've said before, but I just think, you know, you mentioned his wages. He's, he, he's reportedly on about £150,000 a week, and I just think... You know, there are teams financially that are ahead of us, obviously, as we all know. And I don't think, I'm not sure Liverpool can afford to have £150,000 a week striker as fifth choice, as you said before. He's got to be on the pitch more regularly to, to, to warrant that. And he's played some, I think he's played less than a quarter of Premier League games since 2013 14. And, you know, I think when you're just crunching the stats and the numbers and you're looking at where you can trim your squad and how you can get better players in and all that sort of thing, it, it just doesn't stack up. And I think also Daniel as well must must surely want regular first team football. And what Klopp's done, what we've seen Klopp do since he's been here, is is reduce the reliance on Sturridge. I mean, you you go back to to Brendan Rodgers when he would be bemoaning Sturridge's absence over and over again, saying, "Yeah, but he's back soon." And if we add him and all this sort of thing, that kind of talk has, has stopped. And it's almost yesterday was like a huge bonus. It was great. It was fantastic. I'm always rolling back the years and all that sort of thing. But we all know, I think, that Firmino now is the first choice. And if you've got Firmino there, if you've got Mane fit, probably someone else is going to come in as well. Just where's he getting his game? And he, he wants to be the main man. You know, he, he's got that strut and that swagger. He likes to be the fella who's boss and the best at the club. And I just think there's there's probably a club out there who'll go, he can do that for us. But isn't he just as likely to be injured, at, in, injured at, at West Ham, which means... Well, that's probably just as likely, but I, I just think, you know, the way football is and the talent he's got, someone would be prepared to I, take I a risk. Think, but I think this is the challenge for Daniel Sturridge, that he says, and it's the, it's the question about Daniel Sturridge, he's on 150 grand a week, as you say. That's the number. No other club's given him that. So Le Pearl are faced with the task of having to pay him off a bit. Because he's not going to say to himself, well, I'll, I'll miss out on that. He might think to himself, well, why would I go and play for a lesser club? Th- then you've got the question whether someone even pays a fee for him or what they pay for him. Does he want to go and play for a lesser club? Does he want to go and play for West Ham? I agree. Or Stoke? With you. I don't think he does. To do. I, I, well, I, yeah, so I think the reality of the situation might be that we actually say to ourselves, we'll have to swallow this one. And Daniel Sturridge, because Daniel Sturridge will be asking himself, he, a club comes into him and says, right, Daniel, can you be fit? Or Liverpool say to him, right, Daniel, we're thinking your future might be elsewhere. And he says, well, why? And they say, well, you know, if you can get yourself fit, you know, someone will make you the main man. And he might say, but if I can get myself fit, I can be your main man. Exactly. Because I'm still Daniel Sturridge, and I'm still good, and I'm not as fast, but I'm still good. And they might say to him, well, the money, and he might say, well, no one else is going to give me the money. Why am I going to go? For 90 grand a week, why am I going to go for 80 grand a week to Stoke and not play? And my career, you know, fritter away. He might think to himself, 
give me a year. Is age is interesting in this, isn't it, Jay? Just to just to sort of come back to you because if he was if he was twenty three, you could say, well, he could drop down a level, prove himself, and then get one more big move. He knows he can't come back. That's what I I think. That's why this is really difficult for him. I mean, I'd love to it'd be a great, it'd be a really interesting person to speak to if you could obviously get him to speak completely openly and honestly about it because I think it's a real. It is actually if you think about it for a second, I go back to you, Gareth. Actually, it's a real almost personal conundrum mm. because I think unless someone and if I'll be honest, if I was managing the, I'm running this club, I'd do this. But unless someone like Paris Saint Germain comes in for him, and as I say, if I was Paris Saint Germain, I'd actually go for him. But unless someone like Paris Saint Germain does go for him, then it's really difficult to see the to see his path through. I mean, because for instance. He can't even go to Everton. Is my point. He can't no. go to Everton. He's not going to go from Liverpool to Everton. So oh, that. So now you look at and now you suddenly now we're having a conversation about Southampton. We're having a conversation. Rob said before about Stoke, and you just get into this situation where you're going well on a personal level. That'd be a really quite a difficult thing to do, and being the age that he is, I just think the whole thing it's it is genuinely interesting. If you know what I mean, if you even take the Liverpool part, our emotional connection out of it, just what this really talented, impressive, intelligent young man does. Yeah, yeah, it is, and. and it's a real shame as well, just to throw the emotion back in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but it's a, it is genuinely a real shame because you know you can see the talent he's got, and you know I don't I don't agree for a minute with that with any of these views that you know sort of like it's just a lack of desire to want to be on the yeah. pitch. I don't believe that for a minute. His body lets him down, and it's not his fault. And and they've surely looked at every different way they possibly can to manage him, to manage his fitness, to get him fit and keep him fit, and seems to have gone through all those processes. And it just feels to me that. You know, Klopp has got to Klopp has got to do what you've just said and, and completely take the emotion out of it. And I think when he's doing that and he's looking at all the facts and figures and the stats, if someone does come knocking, I just can't see him saying no. Who who comes knocking is obviously interesting. But I, 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 I can't. I, I I agree with you that I can see Klopp thinking to himself, "I'd rather get your hundred and fifty grand off the wage bill, mate. I'd rather get 15, 20 million for you, because I don't see you being first choice. And I've got Mane and I've got Firmino and Origi." And I'm going to get rid of Ings. I'm not even going to give him a chance because it's just the time's passed and I want someone else. He wants another winger kind of player like maybe a, uh, like Mane. And he's thinking there's four or five and where does Coutinho, where does Sturridge even play then? But I think when they go to Daniel Sturridge and say about going on, rightly so, people say about an ego. He should have an ego. He's a striker. All the great strikers yeah. have egos. I reckon he says, fuck going to Stoke or West Ham, lads. That's very funny that. His agent's going to ring him and say, I'm not even ringing Daniel. Klopp says to him, I want him to go. His agent's going to say, I'm not even going to tell Daniel that. I'm not telling. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to Daniel with, with Stoke on the table. So it's like when they say to Alan Partridge, "Will he downgrade, I think people, downgrade from his Jag to a Rover yeah, or something I like that?" He's not are, having it. Yeah. I think people are only saying West Ham because it's London, and I think yeah, they want bullshit. the London lifestyle. I think. If and they Ars- assume he's a Cockney, and he's not. Yeah, and I think if an Arsenal <laughs> come for him, I think if an Arsenal come for him or something like that, he might consider it. He might think, "Okay, I'll go there and play." Depending on what it's going to look like, they do rotate their strikers. But then there's the other bit of well, if we're going to pay him off. And we're not even going to get much of a transfer fee for him. Fuck it. I'd rather have Daniel Sturridge one in four games. Well, certainly not one of them kicking it in the net for Arsenal. No. Exactly. This is this is the other thing as well. There's yeah, genuinely that to someone. Arsenal yeah. would worry me so, because they genuinely love an injured lad, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> There's that whole model. He's, he's rehabilitated himself, though, which is an odd phrase to use for Daniel Sturridge, but but he has. Because if you remember when he signed for us, it was it was all pitched as this is your last chance and all this yeah. sort of thing. And now we're talking about the last chance for a different reason now, because of his age, because of his injuries. But there's little, I don't think there's as many conversations as there was then about his attitude, his ability, whether he could cut it. Yeah. I think we've all seen him cut mm. it. You know what I mean? He's been, he's been, he's been, when he's been fit and fired and he's been brilliant for Liverpool, he scored every type he's of goal. Brilliant. You know, he was he, he, absolute star quality up front for Liverpool. And, and that's how he should be, you know, if he does go, that's how he should be remembered, not, not for the negative stuff for me. I, yeah, I, I agree with the general sentiment that I think he could force the issue here. The key, the key factor is, is what does Klopp think about having him around the place as a, as a bit part actor? Yeah. That's a key factor here because Liverpool have a choice. I think Daniel will say, you know, as Jay has, has, has alluded to here, you know what? They can write me off, but while I'm here, I'm still on the same money. And if they have a couple of injuries, they're in the bloody Champions League and I could, I'll come in and score them a goal and they'll look at me with fresh eyes. He'll always back himself that way. But also, it's, but also if you clop and, and, and it's back to what, how many games you actually think you can get. And we don't know that. We haven't got the sports science and even the sports science could prove to be wrong. But what you've actually seen if you clop, I keep using the example of what do you do when it's Porto away on Wednesday and it's, and it's Burnley away on Saturday morning at half 12 if we get into the Champions League, that you need to be able to win both games or at least get a result away at Porto. And... Part of that answer you may well have seen at the weekend is genuinely, and I think you can overstate this, but I'm of the view 
current climate in the Premier League, there's a strong argument going away to your bottom 12. Just go two up front. Mm. Go two up front. Do what do do what we actually saw us do. You know the tactical thing of go two up front, occupy them, worry them, pin them back, and look to Lip, penetrate Lip, them. Liverpool go to Porto away four five one. Firmino up top on his own. Lots of creative midfielders around him who can do a shift, and then they go to Burnley with Sturridge and Origi up front, and Firmino doesn't play, and and that's where he might think to himself, well, it depends, because the other dynamic that comes into this, does Sturridge stay fit in the summer? So. Liverpool might want to put him in the shop window, so he goes on pre-season tour, and Liverpool like to show that he's fit. And then Daniel and he looks says, great. <laughs> that it looks great. Ankle knock out for three weeks. Yeah, doesn't get to play in some of the pre-season games for whatever reason. And it's like okay, or Liverpool are thinking, right, we want him and him. You know, we want another man, a type player, and you know this striker might be available, so we might get rid of Ings and bring in this young lad and see how he turns out. Not available. Only one of them is, and he might think, mm, God, I've just sold Danny Ings, or Danny Ings on the way out. You know, what do we do? You know, I think that Danny Ings, I, I think Liverpool have a bit of a conundrum because the players they might want to get rid of, they just don't look the most saleable. Moreno's hardly played. Who, who comes in for him? Does he fancy that move? You know, maybe, maybe I him, think Moreno, well, Moreno's easier. Moreno be, yeah. If he go, but if he goes abroad, kind of thing. But Danny Ings, what's his move? Where's That's... his move? What does he think? What yeah. does Sturridge think? I, th I think it's a challenge in summer for Liverpool, not in terms of the ins they want to get, but but the outs, how you convince some of these lads that it might be a good thing. I think it would be the right thing for Daniel Sturridge if he wants to get his career back on track to think, I need to go and play somewhere else. I just don't think it's as easy to convince him of that with the options that are likely to be available. Do you so, remember the Barini situation? Yeah. That Barini, you know, was all but out the door. There were offers there, but he saw Liverpool in the Champions League. He saw game, which meant two things, prestige and games. And he, and he thought, I'm hung, hanging around. And I, and, and I take Jay's point again and again here. The in, in both Ings and Sturridge could take that view. Okay. And I went, went, but just think, though, Fabio Benini went I want to talk Liverpool. about how Boss Coutinho is. But he went from Liverpool to Sunderland. <laughs> and, and and he doesn't he, always want to do this. And Sturridge isn't going to think, oh, yeah, Liverpool to Sunderland's a great move. Yeah, I don't always want to do this, so I'm doing it and I'm going to enjoy it. Um, <laughs> Let's have a lovely big chat about our boss, Philip Coutinho. As we mentioned it from a tactical point of view before, Robbo. But there's, in general, my, one of my things with him in sentiment as well is wins his battles. More than happy to put his foot in. I mean, he's, at times he's going to get muscled off the ball by, by some, bigger lads. Yeah, but... there was one where they got away, wasn't he? But but there was another one where he, I remember him, distinctly remember him putting a tackle in and you thought, oh, hello. And he can do a bit of that. I mean, you know, Jay referenced Everton. And I remember him not being not being shy of get, of putting his foot in against Everton on, on his right. So yeah, he, he has got that in his locker as well. But um, The class, though. But yeah, absolutely brilliant, wasn't he? I mean... What I loved about that ball to Sturridge, not only like the weight of it and the vision of it, but also if you watch it back, he's almost he, he, he's almost he's played it in his head before he receives it. Do you know what I mean? And he's absolutely itching to play it. He's like a little kid. You can see like his his hands like shaking. Like, oh, give us it, give us it, give us it, because I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And then as soon as he gets it, he pings it, and it's perfect. But also as well, you know, the other goal, the goals he got, the goal he gets when uh, Van Alden hits the bar with that with that boss shot. It's almost, it feels like it's underrated what he actually does to score that goal because everyone was still going, wow, see that one that hit the bar? <laughs> and he's actually skinned about three of them there and yeah, put it in the mad. corner. But do you feel how far <laughs> out it is as yeah. well? I thought it was like he was on the penalty spot. For, he's he's, out, he's five the yards box. outside the box. Yeah. Yeah. And it's along the deck, bottom corner. That's Goal normally away. the shot he pulls as well, isn't going it? Going across his own body and across the keeper, brilliant. Yeah. That's that's the, that's the one where you still lament that Coutinho shot. Do you remember? Yeah, the one he always dragged. Yeah. In a way, the biggest seeing him in as a midfield player reminded me of the, the Coutinho I think I enjoyed best, which was in his first six months. It seems mad to say that, and bits in the 2013-14, the, the lad who would drop deep and just hit all kinds of balls like his foot was a wand to put people away. And we've seen less of that as when he, his career level career changes two years in when he puts it, lifts his head up outside a box, cuts in on his right and, and curves them into the top bin time and time again. And it made every manager since then, Brendan and, and Jürgen, go, well, he's got to be near the goal, this lad, with that kind of finish on him. And he'll do, give you 10 goals a season you just weren't getting. And in a way, he doesn't have the opportunity, therefore, to play his genius passes. And he is, you know, Neil, you've, you've championed this move for some time, and I, I've, never, I've never quite disagreed, but when you see it like that, you can realise just how much more but, there is. You see him scoring well, as my, well. My, my, but my thing on it is that he can is that you can have both. And that's been long been my frustration, is the idea that if he, play, if he starts deeper, you're not going to get the same goal return from him. I'd expect the same goal return from him, if not a couple more. And now you've got more goals coming from midfield yeah. and someone else up front who might have a better goal that return than him in, in that position as well. 
well because I just think he's it's it's the seeing he can still come in off an angle he can still be going past people he can still be doing everything that he can still score a goal on the break and now you've got so if you if, if we can find a way to get effectively you know between Coutinho and Lallana across the course of a season 20 goals mm. from midfield when not very few of the goals come from them playing in the front three then my lord you know what I mean that is could you play two of them in a the midfield three I think well I would I genuinely I think I, you can yeah I think you I think you can at home against the bottom 10 because they're just yeah. gonna let you have the ball anyway and I think yeah. you could say Guardiola would yeah with the right with the right midfielder sitting sitting at the base whoever that is and just sort of accept that you know what you might you might get hit in the break every now and again or you might get done every now and again but broadly those two with three in front that means you can open people up it means they can carry it it means and as Gareth said before the other thing is it means someone's got to be thinking hang on I've got to deal with Coutinho and Lalana, and they've still got a front three. Oh, and there's the fullbacks you know what's possible sure. you know what's really fas- fascinating about Coutinho and it's I'm going to end on a slightly negative point about this but not intentional because it just did literally spring to mind watching him play yesterday it's the ability he gets to go past someone like they're not there and not even just like we're getting a bit of space to get a shot off or a pass but he literally goes past people without looking very fast. He will go past mm. people like they're not there. Yeah, he yeah. cannot catch him up, and it's like I don't, I don't know what it is. Whether it's just that he gets them so flat-footed and takes it past. Them I think so it's, easy. he's got them unbalanced. Yeah, they don't know what to do. But watching him do it, and it goes back to that link with Barcelona. Is you thinking to yourself, Barcelona lost Xavi, and they got a midfield now, but they're gonna lose Iniesta soon. And you look at him do that kind of thing and think, if he keeps doing that sensibly for us. Barcelona are going to be taken. Oh, I completely agree with that. They're ready made. He, he fits perfectly. Now, it's brilliant for us if we get him playing Central next year and Liverpool doing really well because he might think, don't need to go to Barcelona to do this. I can do this here. I think this is... It, I'm, it, it could be incredible with, you know, a front three of fast players, a Mane who can, you know, go wide. That gives him an option... You, you know, tons of space, like great Iniesta. space everywhere. Imagine yeah. like you're in Iniesta. Imagine you're Coutinho thinking, well, yeah, which one do I want to pass it to up front here? Give it, give it into Firmino. He'll pop it back off to me and I'll make a run. I can run with it myself. I can give it wide to Lallana. I can give it to Mane. I can give it to the new lad on the left wing. There's two up top. Maybe Sturridge just came off the bench. I'll give it to Sturridge. I'll... He could be, t- he's just thinking to himself, I'll decide what I want to do now. And that will scare defenders more than anything. Not even that, he's got this ability. It'll be that he's in control he will dictate our play next year you know we talk about Henderson gets the ball and recycles it I think that's changed to Henderson particularly if we sign a, a defensive midfielder might be a question of where Henderson fits into the team but I think it you know it, it won't be that it'll be get the ball give it to him to do something with like the way Alonso used to do at the base of the thing and Henderson's been doing but not as well it's now going to be get the ball and give it to Coutinho let him do something with it I have a run with it Pass it off to someone and get forward. He's gonna dictate how Liverpool play next season. He's yeah. I mean, we're just we're just going over and over about how fantastic he is. But there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, I no. Mean, no. The, the other it's goal, a great hour. Well, the, the, <laughs> the other goal as well. You know, the one that comes from the v- Vinaldum slap stroke handball situation and and the lad lying down on the deck and West Ham expecting us to just kick it out and go, you're all right, mate, which is never happening. It was absolutely made up. Liverpool played on in that situation. We had on that one as well. It was like. You know, I reckon that's probably the point where why everyone's talking about West Ham being on the beach because but it wasn't them being on the beach. It was just them not being able to get anywhere near Coutinho and him just deciding really when he wanted to finally hit that shot. I love I love the slow-mo of that, by the way. Just loads of faces, the keeper. I think it's Cresswell on the line and they're just all like, no, it's like, you know, it's yeah. like uh, like something out of a platoon we, when it's in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> fav- my favourite th- still it did. My favourite thing about that goal is that James Collins spends the entirety of it working out what he's saying to the referee when the ball goes yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sucked. sadly, when it goes dead, it's in the goal, <laughs> mate. Yeah. It's not just gone dead. It's not just something stopped. It's, you can see that's all these things. He's thinking, I'm going to give the referee the ref a was brilliant on that yeah. as well because he runs for miles to go and find them. Says, like you say, what, he, what he's obviously worked out he was going to say and the ref just basically goes, fuck off, lad. Stay yeah. yelling. <laughs> yeah. It reminded me of a Suarez goal. I was right behind it and time stood still. You toyed with them. Yeah, you thought, this is the moment we win this match and we complete the mission here. Because 2-0, you don't trust Liverpool. You do just about at three. Notwithstanding, actually, I don't know if we fucked up at three. But yeah, time stood still. With I loved that goal. And it did remind me of a Suarez when he wanted to beat the extra man. He wanted to make sure that he's good enough to be But it's to a nightmare that, that like, like, I mean, if you're a defender there, it's that thing, isn't it, where you just keep trying to stretch your leg. 
a little bit further and there's, n- there's none of your leg left. <laughs> <laughs> and you just know... Just oh, haven't quite got that, That's the bit where he's going <laughs> to hit it now. And that's the bit where he just absolutely thumps in the back. And I, I, I don't know if you've got it, but well, you haven't got it down here. I've got your agenda here. Yeah. I just want to give a little shout uh, to, to Emery Charm because I just like the way that basically you just let them all play in front of them. Yeah. But every now and again, he just come in and went bang. <laughs> no lads, you aren't, you aren't getting involved. And he, he was like sort of Coutinho's minder. Mm. You know what I mean? He just sort of knocked round at the back and every now and again just stepped in. Loads of little tactical fouls, putting people on their ass. Quite in, quite quietly enjoyed that. Which but, just, and I know it's moving away from the Coutinho chat, but if we're saying that's where Coutinho's going to play next year and you might have, even if you have four or five in midfield and one up top, you're still, I imagine, only going to have one sitting player. You're not going to have two sitting. So one of them's going to fit either side or something. You're going to give him a bit more license to go. And I think it's like Lucas through the year. It's like Lucas of a few years ago. His job was just to run lateral. You're not going up the pitch, mate. You're just going to get side to side and you're going to help out the fullback when they're breaking down that side and you're going to do the same thing. And you wonder if that might be Chan's job or it might be Keita or Keita, I don't know how you say his name. But it, he does it. And I think... This is where you're almost wonderful. Is Jordan Henderson going to get further forward? Are we going to have players that are just thinking, come on, we've got to have a defence who are just going to say, but, but also, almost maybe a better version of what we've done under Rodgers. But also, also, Jay, you've got, I mean, but it's, it's again worth remembering as, as we go through this sort of stuff. We need 20. We don't yeah, need we need 11. Goals. You know what I mean? No, we need, we need 20. Uh-huh. We, need, we need 20 players. You know, if we're going to, if we're going to have serious, if, if we're going to, no, no, if we're going to have serious, uh, if we're going to have serious ambitions of, of, of being able to fight on two fronts, which we should have if we get into the Champions League and it remains an if. But if we are, we need to have, you know, it's, we need to, we need to add five players to the first team squad, want, I and think. I, and I don't yeah. want them just to be squad players. I want them competing. No, I chances. want them all thinking. I oh, want yeah. Henderson thinking, right, well, I'll come in in that League Cup game or FA Cup game and I'll win my place back in the League game. The one after, like you said there about Sturridge, it's maybe forced on him because Sturridge has had a boss week. Come on, he looked sharp. He looked like more yeah. of a threat last week. He's trained all, trained well all week. He deserves a start. And maybe Klopp might, it, you know, it'll be the meritocracy at Liverpool like you'd want it to be of, you know, come on, you, you turned up, you've done well, Sam. You're in the team, mate. Success happens, I think, when you've got two attacking players on the pitch who don't deserve to be on, uh, on the bench, sorry, who don't deserve to be on the yeah. bench, who are, who is just a sheer numbers game. We sort of contrived to have this the other week when we had Firmino and Coutinho on the bench against Stoke. And you could see that kind of impact. Obviously, vintage era United, we banged on about this, that Tevez and Berbatov on together City. On, seven, on City now. Yeah, City now. We get to that, but to get to that situation and to bear in mind that players are going to get injured and need rotating, you, you, I mean, we've got a front three at the moment with Lalana who deputises and two lads who struggle for fitness and form. And that's without European football. I agree with you, Neil, more than three, three, three top quality forwards, but they're not squad players, as Jay said. Absolutely lads who... I want to see Firmino having a problem getting in the team, basically. That, to me, is successive. If Firmino's worrying about his game come August, we've done something right. Uh, just wanted to mention Matip and Mignolet in dispatches. Rob thought both had good games again. Yeah. Uh, I think that West Ham didn't have Cagliari doesn't look a terrific player but Lanzini is a good player mm. Matt have to go out of his way a couple of times to get on top of him and um, Mignolet manages uh, despite the kerfuffle before half time again to to be approaching the point where he's actually giving the lads a bit of confidence yes he is he, he's he's just doing the basics in a no nonsense way now uh, okay they accept his kicking's never going to be fantastic but he's not he, he looks He's, grow- he's growing into his own success, if, if you know what I mean. He's, he's not indecisive in the way. He's taking, he's taking each, each positive performance as a plus and going, I can build on this. You are all right, Simon. It's, I know it's an obvious thing to say, and it's a natural progression. But he does feel, you know, this is the weirdest things. He feels like a good, steady Eddie keeper now. I never think I'd say that about him. Yeah, he's coming punching. He's getting them. He's catching them. He's, do- he's just doing all the stuff. You know, almost... You're not noticing him now. He didn't have to make a world of a save. No, he still he, played he, he well. Made the, he made one good save. The lad, the, the lad, it's it from distance. It comes through a bit of a crowd. Yes, gets down well. It's a, it's a good saves. hand. It's a good yeah, hand as well. That yes. good, good hand on that. And then uh, you know the punches. Like I say, I mean, you know, the, you, used to be a lot of punches that he doesn't get to, and, and his decision making could be questioned. All of a sudden, he isn't a question. He isn't a conversation. And you know, this is probably the end of the conversation. That wasn't it. There's not much else to say. No. he was solid. He was good. He did his job. Great, and if you just keep saying that every week, then you haven't. You basically haven't got a problem at goalkeeper. It's what, what you want your keeper to do. Yeah, um, and so therefore you were talking about it before and started the show. Let's end the show. It's the focus of everything, Gareth. It is now one game, one game against an already relegated Middlesbrough. Aside, of, it's worth remembering this season they've got a point at City, they've got a point at Arsenal. It's complacency shouldn't be around, but it's very much 
you want to see a Liverpool side tear into them. I think that's what you're looking for in this one, is, is, is to tear into them. Have an eye on third. We'll know what City have done before, then everyone kicks off the same time on the Sunday games. But just find a way through this and secure the job because they've yet again when they've been called upon when they've been tested this season they're now on four consecutive away games it's hard to dispute I think this side deserves it deserves it more than Arsenal finishing in the top four I think they arguably deserve to finish ahead of Manchester City um, and I'd like to see them do it just get it all boxed off absolutely and and, let, and let's let's sort of celebrate them as well as as having done a decent job because I think um, I think all too often I'm seeing the season almost presented as a bad one and, and okay, you know, the start of the season, the, the rip-roar and football and all that we were playing then, we did all get excited like we do and, and think we had the chance of the league. We had that, we had the nightmare month, but then we've pulled it back and I think they deserve credit for that recalibration of sights really because that's hard to do mentally. Mm. When, when you think that you've had the chance to, to win a title and it's taken away from you and you fall out of the cup competitions as well and it just seems like the walls are falling in. To pull it back and to get back in the situation where you've got 73 points, you got one game to play and you're in the Champions League. Do you deserve credit for that? And, you know, people are talking all the time, and me included, about that the squad isn't big enough, the quad, there isn't enough depth there, there isn't enough quality there. So, OK, we'll, we'll all accept that as true then. So, actually... They've well all well done, done these lads yeah. and the manager so in, they've the, done in that a, scenario. So, they've done a good job to get where they are. And I, I just hope everyone honestly goes on Sunday with the right mindset of, listen, let's go and celebrate them, let's go and champion them, let's get them over the line and do our bit as well, let's play the part that we know a crowd can play because... Like I said, you know, earlier on, if, if you don't bring that attitude to Sunday, then basically what are you going for? Because th th there's a there's a really it's a, it's a really pivotal moment. This if Liverpool fall off the cliff at the last hurdle, like mixing me metaphors, like fuck. But <laughs> it, it, if, if if they do, that will be an absolute nightmare in every respect. It'll be a nightmare for for our mindset, for the players' mindset. It'll affect recruitment. Liverpool need to be in the Champions League and need to be in there regularly. But, you know, to, if we want our name to be what we all think it is in Europe, then this game's absolutely vital. So go there, scream, shout, make a noise, get the reds over the line, let's swat the bastards. Yeah, I'd like to see us go with the attitude that it's. I want third to be on, and I want us to be chasing That'd goals. Be boss, wouldn't it? I like us to be chasing goals. So a bit like that Palace game, but with a happy ending. I, I want us to go there. It's not about we've got to beat Middles, but it's got about how many we beat them by. Not in a complacent way. In as much as we've got to start quickly, we've got to get these goals. In some respects, if City get. I don't know, a two or three against West Brom. And our objective on the last day is if City draw at Watford and we do these 4 0, we'll be third. If that, if that kind of challenge will be good because I think that'll get us out of the blocks. I think it'll take away nerves. Yeah, for, for me, I, you know, I, I want Liverpool on Sunday. I, I want us to all just do that knowing thing where you, you know, you just smile to each other and you go, yes, the Reds are great, aren't they? You know, we go there, do our job, do it really well. Get back in, get back in the Champions League where we should be. I don't want. Sorry, we beat three 0 earlier in the yeah, season. I, I want a ground. celebration. I don't want a big, you know, oh, it's a triumphant thing of Champions League. I've seen some people talk about welcoming the coach and stuff like that. I think we should turn up there, and I think it's a statement of intent if we just say, you know what, no, fans are going to be in the ground. Do what they should do. Yeah. The players do what they should do, and Liverpool be where they should be. That'd be a great statement of intent mm. for Liverpool on Sunday. All of us playing our part, but it would just. It, and at the end of the game, I want to be walking out the cop and I just want to turn to me and go. Yeah, it's good that in it. Can't wait for next season now. Well in. Say to that to the people around you know, be happy on that note. Not like this thing of like, oh, it's just there we go, just get through. You know, there's the players with the kids. I feel bad if I want to get off here, but I'm <laughs> you know, just going through the motions here, but I want to get off. I'm not really bothered about how many of them are in kids with the kids with the dad's name on the back or whatever. Do you know what I mean? We've been crap, this is rubbish, we've just got beat. Let's go home. I want us to just think, yeah, you know what? This is this is what I expect from Liverpool, but also this is what it is about coming here. Yeah, Champions League should be a given, but it's also it is pivotal. I think it there's more on Sunday than than just Liverpool getting in Champions League and recruitment. I think it's the whole Klopp philosophy philosophy. The project. I think I think you're saying to Klopp, well I give you another year to even get into the Champions League. And I think before and long Klopp's thinking to himself, well hang on, my ability to impact some change at this club is is getting further and further away. And I can go and do it somewhere else. That's maybe a bit closer to this. And I think given that there's now a top six, you've got to take that opportunity because mm. the other team will. You've got to take that extra money that the Champions League comes. You've got to take the prestige from it. You've got to get those players in now and cement your place in the future. We don't need another project where we're saying to, to Firmino, Coutinho, give us another year. We'll get it this year. Mm. You know, saying to, you know, 
a new player who's coming in. Oh, yeah, sorry, we've just missed out on the Champions League. We promise we'll get it next year. Because they'll be thinking to themselves, well, you didn't get it this year. It was a top six and you had a boss start. And teams are going to come again. So it it... It, 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 it'll be a statement of intent and a big thing on us both. It's two fingers to, to everyone else as well, though. Absolutely. I mean, you know, like, if Arsenal yeah. tumble out of the Champions League qualification spots for, what, the first time in 17, 18 years, something mad like mm. that under Wenger, then that really is the chaos set in under Wenger. They're in crisis. They can have all that shit that, that will come with not finishing in the top four while we're enjoying being there. And then you've got Mourinho as well spending all that money. You know, we, we need this. We need to be in there to be taken seriously in every respect. Uh, Gareth Roberts, Rob Gutman and Jay McKenna, thank you very much to the Anfield app this week. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe if you don't. Theanfieldapp.com forward slash subscribe. Should be a fantastic week. And you can win the signed new Coutinho shirt as well. Theanfieldapp.com forward slash Coutinho for that. All subscribers will be entered into the draw uh, for the signed Coutinho shirt. £5 a month sign up. If you don't like it after a month, you don't have to do it anymore. Uh, so it's theanfieldrap.com forward slash subscribe. We're confident enough to think that if you do sign up, you will want to stick with it. Uh, loads of fantastic stuff coming up on Tour Player this week. So it's a good week for any to subscribe. It should be all about excitement, all about Sunday, all about Liverpool at Anfield against Middlesbrough. Come and adore them. They've nearly qualified for Europe.